There's a reason old gardeners never throw away banana peels or stale bread. It's not because they're frugal, it's because they've learned to think like earthworms. The humble worm is the quiet engine behind the best gardens. Where worms go, fertility follows. But here's the thing. In most gardens today, especially those suffering from compacted or nutrient-dead soil, worms are missing. Or worse, they're dying off. If your soil feels more like dry clay than soft cake, this guide is for you. You don't need to buy worms online. You don't need to dig a trench every week or start fancy worm towers. What you do need is a few simple, consistent habits that create the perfect environment for earthworms to move in, thrive, and multiply right in your backyard. Whether you've got raised beds, ground plots, or container gardens, this works. Let's walk through the exact worm-boosting strategies that'll turn your quiet soil into a living, wriggling ecosystem. Earthworms aren't just soil dwellers, they're architects of fertility. As they move through soil, they create micro-channels that improve drainage, allow roots to expand, and increase airflow. Their castings are a goldmine of nutrients filled with enzymes and bacteria that accelerate plant growth. Even better, worm tunnels make the perfect path for mycorrhizal fungi to spread, linking plants together in underground nutrient networks. But worms won't just show up unless your garden gives them three things, moisture, consistent food, and protection. It all starts with feeding the soil, not just the plants. And the best worm food isn't always what people think. Kitchen waste alone doesn't do the trick. What worms love is softened, partially decomposed organic matter. Things like soaked bread, overripe fruits, steamed rice, and wilted leafy greens. These should be buried just under the mulch layer or into shallow pits where they don't dry out or attract flies. If you want to trigger fast worm reproduction, bury small pockets of lazy compost, meaning a mix of food scraps and already moist soil, and cover with cardboard or straw. This turns the topsoil into a worm magnet. Molasses diluted in water can also be poured over these zones. It doesn't feed the worms directly, it feeds the bacteria, which in turn attract the worms, and once worms find this microbial hotspot, they don't leave. Worms need constant moisture but that doesn't mean flooding your garden. Think damp sponge, not soggy sponge. Dry topsoil stops worm movement entirely, so if your garden tends to bake in the sun, apply mulch in layers. Start with a moist core, like rotting leaves, unfinished compost, or shredded newspaper. Then top it with straw cardboard or grass clippings. These layers trap humidity underneath and create a cool shelter worms can breed in. For raised beds or sandy soils that dry out quickly, try watering with worm tea made from soaking finished compost in water for a day or two. This adds beneficial microbes and keeps conditions ideal for reproduction. If you're in a dry climate, planting shade crops like beans or sweet potatoes can also help reduce surface evaporation while feeding the soil. Compost piles are worm nurseries, if managed right. Most people build their compost too dry or too carbon-heavy, and worms don't colonize it. The trick is to create a wormy layer at the base. Start with half-finished compost that's still warm and active, then mix in a handful of rich garden soil and water until the whole base feels like a wrung-out sponge. Top that with a few soft food scraps and then cover the pile. Within a few weeks that layer will be crawling with baby worms. You can even scoop it out and transplant it to other parts of your garden. For folks living in cold regions, it's really important to insulate your compost piles. You can use straw bales or even old carpet to help keep the worms breeding, even when the weather gets cooler. In hotter zones, it's a good idea to bury the worm food a bit deeper. This helps prevent overheating and drying out, which can really be a problem for your compost pile. You know, this might actually be the most overlooked part of worm multiplication. All your effort pretty much goes to waste if you keep creating conditions that drive worms away. Tilling, for example, breaks apart worm tunnels and exposes them to predators and the sun. 
Pesticides, even so-called natural ones, can actually kill the microbial partners that worms depend on, and you know, overusing wood chips or pine needles can acidify the soil so much that worms just won't breed. If you've been layering wood mulch for years, it's a good idea to balance it out with some nitrogen-rich green materials underneath. Also, try to avoid watering your garden with chlorinated tap water. If that's your only option, just let it sit in an open container for about 24 hours before using it. This lets the chlorine evaporate, which helps protect both your worms and all that important soil life. Once you've got worms showing up, the goal is to keep them in one place long enough to build a population. That's where permanent worm zones come in. These can be as simple as buried buckets with holes drilled in them, filled with moist compostables and topped with a lid. Or just trench a narrow zone in your raised bed, fill it with soft matter and cover it every week with a fresh layer. Worms begin laying cocoons in these consistent environments and the population expands naturally. Over time, you'll notice your soil feels different. It'll start to clump loosely when squeezed. It'll smell rich. And when you dig into the top few inches, you'll see wriggling life. That's how you know you've succeeded, not just in getting worms, but in multiplying them. Ready to multiply worms in your garden? Let's do this together. The path to a thriving, worm-rich garden isn't about shortcuts. It's about building an underground world they never want to leave. Soft rotting food, gentle moisture, a mulch blanket overhead, no poisons, no tilling, just simple choices that build a living system from the ground up. Try these methods in one part of your garden and watch the transformation begin. If this guide gave you practical tools or maybe a fresh perspective, don't forget to subscribe to Hydro Haven for more regenerative gardening tricks that actually work. Share it with a friend who's been struggling with dead soil. And let's bring life back, one worm at a time.